Hey everybody, I uh, just wanted to share this video. Uh, I kind of started it a little late from what I was doing, but I just wanted to share, okay? When I first got my BN20 and my calibrations were off, I had a really hard time getting the cut to where I needed it. And I was actually putting in my, my numbers going off the shadowed box here and not the line. So make sure you're, you're looking at the line here. That's your cut and the shadow is your print. Now, on mine, my cut was off. I was getting a little too much here and a little too much here on the black. So then I just went, I go really slow. So to move this over, I went negative with the scan and I went positive with the feed up here. So what I did was I went on my scan to go negative. You have to actually type in negative, the minus sign, then 0 0.1 feed to go up. I went up here and I just typed in 0 0.1. For positive, you don't need to put the positive. You can, but you don't need to. And I wanted to show in the, just really quick, and, and I have the prints to kind of show you. I wish I would have done this as I was doing it, but I had a really hard time with this and I had to actually call Roland to get, to get help. And I, I hope this helps somebody with the same issue because Man, there's not a lot of, like Roland's actual videos on this are, are, they don't really go into detail. But yeah, I wanted to show you that and then I'll get over there with the camera and show you the different, uh, the different prints. All right, so here's my, here's my print and cut. Uh, what I do is I kind of roll the, the roll, you know, if, if it comes out, just so I don't waste the material, I don't keep letting it push out each one. I'll, I'll roll it back. But this one overlaps, so that's why that's not a good idea. But so right here, I had a little bit too much black on the bottom, a little bit too much black on the side here. And as I was making my adjustments, see this one here, a little too much black. So I was only going point 0.1. So I, I don't like to go too too heavy. Just just yeah, you know, that's just my own preference, but. The final one that I've done is this one right here. And as you can see, there's just enough black on all, all the ends. This side here, I could probably actually go over or bring the, bring the box over just a tiny bit. And maybe, maybe 0.1 over, that'd be okay. Actually, I might do that since I kind of skipped the, this whole process. But see down here, See how I got a little too much black on top and on the right side? So I went 0.1, uh, 0.1 negative on the, no, I can't remember which one's which, I'm sorry. 0.1 negative this way, and then positive 0.1 up. And after doing that with that one, that created this result here. So it looks like I've got Maybe I could go over just a tiny bit. Let's look at the other side. Now see this side, on that same square, we everything's evenly spaced. So we're good on this side, but you, you see the same thing up here, a little too much on the bottom to the right, bottom right. And I was just only going point 0.1 in the direction you need. But what's important is you're moving the, the transparent square on your VersaWorks software and not looking at the shadow box because <clears throat> I, I was looking at the shadow box and I had a really hard time with this in the beginning but yeah so this box here everything's perfectly even this box here I got a little bit missing on the left but I think that's okay I'm gonna run a test uh, a test sticker and we'll see how that goes all right so here I'm in my VersaWorks software and I am going to just add an image in here now since I already have a customer wanting uh, one of these Raiders decals I'm gonna use that so let's go to my folder <clears throat> where that is right here all right so this one we've got some five by fives, but what I'm gonna do instead of doing that, I'm just gonna make it about 
let's let's do a two by two. And I'm going to push it out here a little bit just to get it away from those crop marks. All right. And then, uh, oh, since we're doing, this is, this is definitely a test. I'm going to go, let's just do all our normal settings. Crop mark good. Well, actually, yeah, I do need crop marks. We're going to do print cut, print cut test. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and add, because I want, one thing I found with these is on the circular patterns, that's where even when everything's calibrated, I don't want that one. Even when everything's calibrated, my circular patterns tend to um, be off a little bit. Uh, I don't want that one either. God, I can't remember. You know, I got SKU numbers for all these, but I don't remember. Sometimes I'll put what it is. Let's do let's do this one. This one I know is circular because I sell a lot of these. Okay. Now this one I'm going to do a two by two also. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and just nest these. So they're all on the same row. I'll just move them in the middle. All right, so looks like all my settings are still in place. Print only. I'm going to make sure that it's, yeah, see, it's going to do cut when I set for cut. Okay, and then I'll just hit print. <clears throat> After this is done, I'm not going to laminate. Well, I guess I could laminate it just in case they turn out good. Yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll see how it goes. All right, so here is that uh, test run I'm doing. <clears throat> One thing since I got this, you got to have at least two and a half inches from that crop mark to the edge of the vinyl. So I always do, I put my ruler right here and I, I usually do about three. Okay. Now, over here you can see I've got all that, this is that piece with all them test cuts. Don't need all that, but one thing is all this vinyl here make a really good uh, scrap piece for um, cutting just plain white decals. In fact, I, I can probably go higher than what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm going to just leave it at that. There's your scrap piece. Oh, don't throw it off the table like I just did. Now this is a scrap piece of laminate. I'm just going to throw this on here. And the only reason I'm laminating this is because if it turns out that my cuts are good, then I got some good stickers. The whole reason I'm doing this too, I've been getting a lot of complaints that my stickers are uh, not coming off the, the backing paper. So I'm really concerned about the material that I'm using. It's that prism jet. Uh, I might have to scrap that entire roll if it pers persists, but we'll see. Hopefully not. Wanted to jump in here on the audio real quick. So the material was not the problem with my stickers not coming off the backing paper. What it was was I had my blade depth just a little bit too heavy, so it was cutting through the laminate, through the vinyl, and just a little bit into the paper, not quite through, but just a little bit through it. So when customers go to peel their decal off, it would also peel off the paper with it. Made it really hard to take them off. But I solved that problem, it's not my material. It was my blade depth. And I'm gonna do a video on that soon. And uh, just wanted to add that in there. Videos. 
I'm sure if you're watching my channel, you're kind of tired of seeing the same crap. Okay, let's load this baby up. Oh, see how I got this? Uh, these crop marks are only going out to about 12 inches. So we need that. Uh, that's gonna be really hard for you to eyeball it. So what I'm gonna do, line the crop marks up on, on this ruler, then over here on the edge, I'll just put a couple of dots. That just shows me where to line up in the machine. In fact, if you want to see that, I'll show you right here. Okay, so on this side, it's pretty easy to just see where it goes. Uh, you want to line that crop mark up with that cutting pad. Now over here, see how I got my dots there? And that crop marks way over here? That just makes it easier for you to know where to put this, this side of the vinyl. And I'm not really getting, okay, there we go. Yeah, see how, e how much easier that is instead of um, just guessing? Okay. That's good to go. I'm not going to do screen record for this, this part of it. Let's just go straight to it. All right, open up your job. Come on. Go to cut only. Make sure your crop marks are on. Um. Yeah, we'll do it. cut image boundary on this one. The way I've got my machine set up right now, I'm doing 75 on my cutting force. Okay, let's check it out. Now one problem I had before, when I had a crop mark that far in, on another job, it would it wasn't reading it. So I cut a crop mark off an older job and just taped it right on top. For some reason that machine wasn't able to read through that laminate. Just for that job, I don't know why. Man, I sure hope this worked. I mean, turns out good. I might have to move my uh, crop mark setting over to the right just a tiny bit. When, whenever I had to do my cut adjustments like that, I'd get really intimidated because, uh, man, it's, it's pretty tough when you're first starting out. But like I said, move that box not not the solid box, but the transparent box. That's what you're moving. All right. Hopefully this this turned out good. Let's check it out. Okay. So far, so good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this because I got a good piece of scrap here. I mean, if you cut this scrap into actual set, like jobs that you're selling, that could be 10, 20 bucks worth of uh, vinyl right there. We'll just leave, we'll just throw that one away there. Okay, now as you can see, the cut adjustment went fine, it looks great. 
Everything looks even. And this particular design, I've been having trouble when they're that small. It, it always seems to cut over. I don't know why. But I think I'm good. I'm ready to, to start uh, producing. I hope that helped. These, uh, these crop marks, cut adjustments, they, they can be a bit squirrely, but uh, just work at it. I mean, when you run into that problem, it's scary, but it, it's it's fun once you learn it. But that's it. I hope, hope this helped you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.